I'm Ann McKee, the campus minister at Maryville College, and I bring you greetings from a very quiet Center for Campus Ministry on an even quieter Maryville College campus. The first thing I want to say is that we miss all of you. We miss the students especially, but also the faculty, the staff, and the friends of the college who normally are here learning and sharing meals and working and serving together. We hope you're all staying healthy, and we do want to find ways to support you and stay connected in this very odd time of being apart. So every Tuesday at 1.15, we'll post a little greeting like this one. And you also can find this week a link to Bill Meyer's chapel talk that he was going to offer us this week in chapel. So I don't know about you, but last week didn't feel so hard. The trip that I was supposed to take with students had to be canceled, but other than that, it was spring break, a time we're used to being able to find a parking place pretty easily on campus and seeing fewer people around. But this week, everyone I talk to is frustrated. Students are sad about not being here with their friends, about so many changes to the semester and to life. Faculty and staff are scrambling to figure out how to do their work from afar, while also often serving as homeschool teachers to their children. Everyone's wondering when and how this will end, how serious the threat really is, what will happen to jobs, the economy, what the summer will look like. A million questions. Only the dogs are happy, as far as I can tell. Our chapel theme this year is The Road Ahead. We just went off-road in a serious way, and we have no idea where this trail leads or when we'll get to where we hope to go. So when I think about not knowing the future, I turn to Paul because every time he thought he had his life figured out, something different happened. And his work became helping communities figure out how to live, imagining a future that was very different than the one they planned. Paul was trying to help them live now as if the future they hoped for had already arrived. So here's what he says in Romans 8, as translated in the Common English Bible. This is Romans 8, starting at verse 4. Now the way we live is based on the Spirit, not based on selfishness. People whose lives are based on selfishness think about selfish things. But people whose lives are based on the Spirit think about things that are related to the Spirit. The attitude that comes from selfishness leads to death, but the attitude that comes from the Spirit leads to life and peace. So, speaking for myself, I was pretty resistant to the notion of social distancing when we first started talking about it. I thought it was really silly to be taught weird ways to greet each other without shaking hands. It felt wrong as a person of faith to keep distance from people when Jesus spent his life touching the lepers, sharing meals with the outcast. Maybe some of you had the same response. Then I read more and saw the paradox of this moment is that we become instruments of healing when we stay apart. We serve others by not touching, by distance rather than by closeness. It began to make sense to me when I realized that it's not my health I'm protecting. If I go into this epidemic imagining that it's my health at stake, then I may, might make all kinds of decisions. I might decide it's worth it to go into that crowd or to take that trip or to keep up with my routine. After all, if it's my health I'm protecting, then good American that I am, I think of myself as having a right to take whatever risks I want. 
But I finally realized, maybe last week sometime, that it's not about my health. It's about the health of many others, mostly who are strangers to me, about whom I'll never know whether my actions made any difference. This moment calls me to interrupt my routines, to not go into crowds, to keep a distance for the sake of strangers whose health is at risk, for the sake of a whole society that's in danger. This moment asks me to take myself out of the center and to imagine how every small decision I make affects others. So when Paul writes, the way we live is based on the spirit, not based on selfishness, he helps me know that this moment is training us to think about others, about their health, about their financial welfare, about people around the world who are struggling with the same illness but in very different situations about the earth itself and what our selfishness has done to it, we're learning new habits here. We're learning to pattern our lives with consideration for how our actions might have invisible but real consequences for other people whose lives are somehow in our hands. Paul says it pretty starkly. The attitude that comes from selfishness leads to death, but the attitude that comes from the Spirit leads to life and peace. That's a promise I think we can hold on to. So I pray life and peace and the generosity of the Spirit to every one of you, no matter what road you are traveling these days. May it be so for all of us. Amen. You can see that Becky Chapman is still at work too, but we're keeping a good distance from each other. So now, if we were in chapel, this is the time that I would ask you what you want to pray for. I'll invite you to use the Facebook comments section to let us know what we can be in prayer about together for you and for the world. But here's some things I know would be listed if you were here. Caston would ask us to pray for classes, which we do, especially in this time of transition. Maya, if she were with us, would pray for her little sister Margaret, who has been ill, and we continue to pray for Maya's family in their grief. You surely would ask for prayers for those around the world and around the country who are ill with COVID-19, you would pray for all the medical workers, for leaders who are making decisions about how to respond to the crisis, and for everybody whose lives are turned upside down in the pandemic. So let's quiet ourselves for just a moment. Holy God, hear our prayers. In our distance, bring us close. In our worry, bring us peace. In our confusion, bring us wisdom. In our selfishness, bring us your spirit, that your love might be in us for all the world.
Amen. See you next week.